What's up? So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be taking a look at some Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 1 glitches. As you would probably expect, with a new map comes a lot of bugs and issues that still need to be figured out. And uh, Chapter 2 was full of those. While the Chapter 2 map was very polished, it wasn't quite perfect, and the glitching community managed to find a lot of bugs in the first week. And you guys seem to really enjoy these videos, so what I wanted to look at today are nine glitches of this first week of chapter two. Now lastly, before we do get into it, if you guys could please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we just hit 2.8 million subscribers, so we're on that road now to the big three. So that would be great, and let's get into it. So I thought I'd start a list out at number nine with something you guys are probably familiar with, and this is the flying boat glitch. I mean the boat, it's, it's, it's a boat, it's, it's a car, it's even an airplane. Basically at the very start of the season last Tuesday, people quickly found this exploit, I guess you could call it. This was a glitch that was very simple and easy to recreate that didn't have major impacts on the game, but was still a, a little bit of an issue. For those of you that weren't familiar with this or how to do it, all you had to do is essentially take a boat to the top of Gorgeous Gorge, which is the waterfall, and just drive it off in the right spot. It didn't work 100% of the time, but it was quite easy to recreate. And by doing this, you basically had a free glide into the next circle. Now, it was pretty easy to get shot down by doing this method, so it wasn't something that was overly effective, but if you were racing the storm to get to the next circle, this was a very easy way to do so. You basically just fly straight as the crow flies rather than going and winding through a river or over hills and, and mountains as your, your car, Boat. But again, it was a, a bit of an issue, I guess. Not game breaking, but it was obviously not something intentional in the game, and Epic removed it pretty quickly. Moving on to number eight, let's talk about bot lobbies. So, this is a bit of an ambiguous term that's been floating around Fortnite the last week, but a bot lobby is basically just a lobby that has more bots in it than players. But I mean, in general, it's really just a lobby that has a significant amount of AI versus. Player. I mean, if you got 10 bots in a lobby of 80 people, that's not really a bot lobby. But if you got 80 in a lobby of 100, that's definitely a bot lobby. Regardless, though, a lot of players have been experimenting with different settings and basically just trying to exploit the matchmaking system so that they can get these beloved bot lobbies. Now, the downside of getting a bot lobby is that you're never really going to improve at the game because you're only going to be playing mostly bots bots, but to someone that just wants to maybe grind XP, getting a lot of kills, or maybe get the winner's umbrella that they don't have yet, a bot lobby is probably a pretty good choice for this. And so there's been one method that a lot of people have been doing on PS4 and Xbox One to achieve this. On PS4, it's extremely simple. You literally just go into your PS4 settings and just click on a setting that makes it so that you can't play cross-platform. You turn off the option to allow cross-platform parties. And on Xbox Live, it's a little more complicated. You actually have to go into your privacy settings on the actual console and turn off the option to play with people outside of Xbox Live. And basically what you do in doing so is you limit the number of potential lobbies that you can join into. And what they'll do because Epic doesn't want to make you wait for a super long time to get into a lobby is they'll take similar players like you and throw you into a lobby with a bunch of bots. So instead of maybe getting a lobby that has 15, 20 bots at the max, you'll get a lobby that has like 60, 70, maybe even 80 bots. And this is something that's still kind of ongoing that you can achieve, but Epic is certainly taking steps to combat this. If you want to get good at the game, it's not something I would recommend doing, but I guess if you want to get your winner's umbrella, this might be an easier way to do so. Mind you, you will have much longer queue times. Anyways, moving on to number seven, we've got a first person glitch. So since the introduction of Fortnite, something that people have always been talking about is the possibility of a first person mode. Due to the visual nature of building, it's something that Epic has never implemented in, but with a glitch, there is a way to actually achieve this now. So you can only actually make this happen in creative, but once you're in there, all you have to do is get the dinosaur gallery prefab and throw it down on the ground. You set it down next to the hub portal, take out your prop weapon, and then go back through that portal, and that's basically it. You'll then be spawned back to the creative hub where you will be in first person mode. You can then go back into your main island and you will still be in the mode. And then from here, your HUD will be gone, but you'll be able to equip yourself with various weapons. And by doing so, you can actually view and shoot these guns from the first person. It's certainly a little glitchy and it's obviously not something that's meant to be, but it's kind of an interesting thing with Fortnite. I've never seen anyone that's found this actually build, so I'm not sure if you can build with it, but you can certainly have 1v1s with friends and all that kind of stuff. 
It's a very weird glitch that provides a different perspective on Fortnite. Now moving on to number six, we have something that is not game breaking or really bad at all. And honestly, to some people, I would say a bonus. So this is a visual glitch that has even been happening in season 10, but a lot of people have been getting it this season that basically keeps your contrail on once you land. Your contrail continues to glow and, and do whatever the theme of the contrail is once you're walking around the ground, which a lot of people seem to enjoy. If you look at the gameplay that we got from Reddit, um, there's someone running around with waypoint and it looks amazing. Uh, same with the Omega skin. I mean, obviously it's going to make you a little bit easier to spot, which is not good, but if you're into aesthetics, it's, it's a nice little bonus. It's not something that is easy to recreate. It's more of just a glitch that happens from time to time, but I gotta say it's, it's actually pretty neat. Moving on to number five, we've got something that some of you guys may have seen in a laser beam video, but it's cool. So I wanted to include it. Now this isn't something new by any means, but if you guys are interested in getting a full view of the new map, it might be of interest. Basically, all you have to do is go into creative, spawn a shopping cart, balloons, and a porta rift. From there, all you have to do is get in the shopping cart and you should start to float up if you have three balloons. And as you're floating, use the rifts and it will basically just glitch you to keep flying up forever. Obviously nothing game breaking, but it is really cool if you want to get a full perspective of what the new map looks like and see all the little islands that are around it. Now moving on to number four, let's talk XP glitches. So one of the biggest complaints that I've seen so far with the new season is the lack of XP, or I guess not so much maybe the lack of XP, but rather the giant amount of XP you need to level up. Epic changed the battle pass system so that you need to go up levels to get tiers. And a lot of people are frustrated with how long it's taking. So a lot of XP glitches have been floating around, but one that I thought was most notable and probably the best one was a bridge glitch. So anytime you land at a a new POI on the map, you will be given 2000 experience for discovering it. So basically there was a glitch where if you landed at the red, blue, green, and purple bridge, which I forgot to mention in my last video, oopsie, you would get the 2000 XP, but it would not register that you had discovered it. So all you had to do was land at the top of the bridge, get 2000 experience, jump off, ready up into another lobby and continue the process. This would give you 2000 XP every minute and a half or so, which is a very quick way to level up. And compare that to getting a win in the game right now, which only gets you about 3000 XP, it's obviously much better. Now, unfortunately, this one has been completely patched and I may add that Epic was extremely quick to patch it, but um, that's where it's at. Now, moving on to our number three spot, we've got a glitch that actually predates Fortnite seasons. It goes all the way back to pre-season one of the first chapter. Way back in the day, there was a specific angle that you could glide down into the map to, and basically it would not activate your glider. So this is the glitch that has been since patched, but basically all you had to do is enable auto run and then basically just tap alt to run. And this would somehow trigger you from just not needing a glider. I don't really understand how this one worked, but I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it has since been patched. But I mean, if you think about it, for anyone that was actually managing to do it at the time, it must have been very frustrating for other players. There's a similar glitch in season nine too, and it's something we've seen a lot, but just getting the ability to have that edge over other players to land five or even 10 seconds earlier can really make the difference between a one or two kill game and then die out and like getting five to 10 kills in a location. Fortunately though, Epic was much better about patching it this time than they were in season nine with the slipstream glitch. Then moving on to our number two spot, we've got the iconic glitch that really goes away, but never gone forever. Um, and this is the under the map glitch. I mean, we've been seeing these basically since the start of Fortnite and we'll never stop to see them. So, you know, obviously with a new map, Epic tries to make things perfect, but they don't always manage to patch up all the holes in the map. And at the start of the week, if you were to go to Frenzy Farm and simply just press the use button on this specific area, it would basically trigger you into thinking your character was hopping into a pile of hay without that hay being there. This will basically then send you through the ground barrier of the map so you would get underneath it. And underneath it was just water. So you basically just swim forever. And so then the only thing at this point that could actually kill you was the storm. So this would pretty much guarantee you a second place finish, then coming down to a heal off, which most times you're probably going to win. And I'm sure a lot more of these are going to pop up as the season continues on. But as of now, this one was at least patched. Definitely 
one of the more game-breaking ones though, as this did allow for easy wins. But if we're gonna talk easy wins, let's talk about what was probably one of the most game-breaking glitches to ever grace Fortnite. And that is the Slurpee Swamp Invincibility Glitch. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with the easy tactic that pretty much every YouTuber and their dog did, where they just sat at one of the sewage pipes at Slurpee Swamp and tried to heal over and over. That, while an interesting exploit of the game, is not what we're talking about. See, that's a fair glitch that's within the parameters of the rules. They're just simply getting health from the pipes and using heals from the fish to continuously gain health. Maybe a little bit questionable, but not a glitch. However, there was a glitch at Slurpee Swamp that allowed you to basically keep Keep unlimited health forever. Very easy to recreate and very frustrating if you're the other player going up against this invincible one. Because, oh, I don't know, you're guaranteed to lose? So fortunately patched, all you had to do with this glitch is go to the easternmost sewage pipe and place down a wall in a specific area. Basically from there, then all you would have to do is just find a specific frame on the wall that would trigger the glitch. From there, this basically activated some weird glitch that instead of regaining three HP or one HP every second, you would get full HP every few seconds. And this was actually enough to keep you alive at the very final storm which would do 10 ticks basically rendering you absolutely invincible really the only way that you could even have a chance of beating this player is if you happen to get lucky and have the final storm on slurpy swamp where maybe you can shoot out their wall or shoot them but overall it was pretty broken and yeah that is our our, our number one glitch of chapter two so far that's it um thank you guys so much for watching this you guys seem to really like these glitch highlight videos so i'll probably do more as the season goes on but yeah if you're new to the channel and want to help me on that goal to uh that grind or whatever you want to call it to 3 million subscribers that would be super appreciated if you're already subscribed maybe leave a like go watch another video and i'll talk to you later peace out you freaking nerds Now it was pretty easy to get shot down by doing this method.